When you know how to properly thread and wind a bobbin on a sewing machine, the machine is going to love you and work so much smoother. So I'm going to show you some tips on threading the Singer Tradition sewing machine and how to put that bobbin in correctly. This is one thing that when people learn, it really solves about 80% of people's problems when they sit down to use a sewing machine. So first off, your choice of thread is important and a good quality thread can make all the difference. So if you've got old thread or thread that you've bought, it's maybe not very expensive, trust me, it's not probably going to be as smooth as a little bit of thread that costs a little bit more. I would recommend going to one of your local sewing machine stores and asking which thread they recommend. So with this spool, this is considered a crisscross wound spool and it will go best on the horizontal spool pin. Because it's got such a large end, let's use a large spool cap. If you had a smaller spool, you could use the smaller spool cap that comes with this machine as well. When you put this on, make sure it goes all the way on and doesn't leave any gap between the spool and the cap. That way the thread doesn't get caught in between. A very common, <clears throat> a very common problem we notice. Now to wind a bobbin, you're going to follow the, the path for the dotted lines. So every time we thread or wind a bobbin, it always goes through this first guide here. But next, this part is important to get it clicked in around what's called a little pretensioner for the bobbin winding. And when it's around there and in there, it puts a little resistance. So if you've ever wound a bobbin and it's kind of fluffy and doesn't look so good, that's because the thread wasn't tight in the pretensioner. Why don't you go ahead and rewind that bobbin and make sure it's nice and tight on the bobbin itself. Take the thread and from the inside out, come through the hole and up through the top. That's what this picture is referring to. So it's there to remind you. When you push the bobbin down, go ahead and push it all the way over to the far right side and then just hold the thread up with your fingers. Step on the foot control and it'll start to wind. Now you can hold on to this and it'll eventually break off. This thread's actually really strong, so I tend to stop it and clip with my scissors. You want to make sure you don't leave a little tail sticking out the top that can actually interfere with the way the bobbin spins once it goes down into the, the bobbin case. So it will stop when it's fuller, so I just keep my foot on the foot control until it actually kind of stops spinning. Uh, I always recommend getting extra bobbins and then always wind nice full bobbins. So when you're done, go ahead and cut and let's watch something here. I actually am going to show you that when you take your bobbin case out, and that little lever that I pulled on, that actually locks the bobbin in. There is a bobbin that comes with this machine. It's already in there. So I'm going to let that drop out, set that aside. Now, if you hold the bobbin like this, you will flip this over. When you flip it over, the bobbin will spin clockwise. And that's the way we want to use it and bring it all the way over to the little groove on the side. And then if you just kind of hold the bobbin, pull it down the front little, edge between the little cover, this little tension area and the bobbin case itself. And you see that little C area? That's where it's gonna sit. Next, it doesn't matter if it's on the left or right of this little finger, but if you become left-handed, as I say, it makes putting this bobbin case in really easy. That little finger does need to be up. If you look down here, the, there's a little home for that finger to actually sit. And if it's not in there, it will kind of flip and, and drop down. Leave this little tail hanging out. We'll show you how you bring that bobbin thread up. Back to the top, the little pretensioner that we just used, that's only for winding a bobbin. So take it out of there, come behind this little guide here and straight down. It even says number two. Let me put make a little note. When you come down this first groove and up, I want you to thread with purpose and even take the thread and floss it back and forth. It gets it deep enough so that when the presser foot is lowered, the thread is correctly in the tension discs. They're actually right inside there. Come up over the top on the right side and down on the left following the picture for number four. Next, there's a little guide at the top of the needle. So get it behind there. And on this machine, there is a built-in needle threader. We'll do a video much closer so you can see how I just magically took the thread through the needle without having to have my uh, good eyes on. But next, to bring the bobbin thread up, 
hold the thread that's coming out of your needle with your left hand and with your right hand we're going to take one full stitch and one full stitch is when this guy comes back up to the highest position that is called your take up lever and by bringing him up to the highest position that means one full stitch was taken and that little loop is our bobbin thread pull it out and then take both those threads down the middle of the foot and to the back. Let's close up that door and take a little piece of fabric. Let me show you what you probably want to do is always take a piece of fabric, fold it in half, and test sewing on two layers of fabric. Make sure you put the presser foot down, it's directly behind the, the foot, and then just go ahead and sew. Everything looks good, it sounds good, because if it doesn't, things don't sound good if you don't thread it right. You do have a reverse button for going backwards. All right, I, one thing I am noticing when, because this is the first time this machine has stitched since it's been boxed up, is the thread looks a little bit dark, and that's because there's still a little oil from when it was shipped. So just make sure that you take some time to sew. If this was to be my very first project and it was something white, it might actually kind of stain it. So just take some time, sew out maybe a couple different stitches, and do a little practice before you actually put something under it. It won't take more than just a couple passes. I'm already seeing that the thread is back to a normal color than the first time we ran it through. So if you see the same stitching on the front as you, we do on the back, which we do, you know you have threaded it correctly.